So this video is kind of a niche video. This is going to be talking about the Crown of Ease Raid Triumph, one that you'll need if you want the title Shadow, and I figured, hey, why not help you get this flawless done as well? Since I made a bunch of flawlesses for the Heroic Menagerie, I might as well cap it off with a Raid Flawless. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Raid, I recommend watching some guides and participating in the Raid first before you go for the Flawless. To start the Flawless, it's very simple. There are six levers in the room, and you must hit all six around the same time. There's two on the left side on the balcony, there's two on the right side on the balcony, and then there's two on the torches that are right when you enter from the spawn. After you have started this, it will say Callus has accepted your challenge. Congratulations, you have started the flawless of the raid. Now, as far as loadouts go, I'm just going to recommend that you rock as many warlocks as possible, as this will make it easier to stay alive due to well of radiance and healing nades and healing rifts and every single kind of healing ability and buff stacks that warlocks can have. Next, I would highly recommend any leviathan themed mod possible. Now, this could mean something like Striking Hand from a Year 1 Leviathan mod, or Year 2, it doesn't matter which one you get it from. Both of them will work in this raid, as well as Giving Hand, Emperor's Blaze, Shocker, Balance, depending on your subclass, as well as Energized, Power Overwhelming, Shielding Hand, any kind of Leviathan buff. Now, as far as weapon loadouts, for the first encounter, I decided to use a heavy machine gun and Telesto. And the reason why I chose Telesto is that it has a lot of ammo, does a significant amount of damage, can clear adds, and doesn't run the risk of killing yourself. Next, to stay alive, we simply stood up on the bather statues, one on the left, one on the right, and we cleared adds accordingly. We assigned our partners just like you would normally with three teams of two, one in the middle, one on the left, one on the right, making sure to kill the crystal and then swapping after every single crystal had been blown up. After the round was over and the buzz dinged, we made sure to wait for the adds to spawn and then we would swap our buffs as well. Now, you just rinse and repeat that for four times over without any deaths and boom, you were right through that first encounter. Now on to the jumping puzzle. Very, very simple with the jumping puzzle. I would recommend using a mountaintop as well as just any kind of secondary that you'll have ammo and as well as a machine gun in case you need the extra ammo. It's actually funny, we've run into a few times where I have died because I've run out of recluse ammo and I've only had mountaintop and no heavy machine guns, so make sure that you have plenty of ammo. On this one, I would recommend only two people moving forward while the rest of the team sits back. The reason for this is because of stomping each other out of the way, knocking each other out of the air, and into the pit of despair and death and flawless over. After you've completed the jumping puzzle, you are on to the deception and it's pretty straightforward as well. Do the deception phase like normal, you know, you're gonna break two cauldrons and then you're gonna get ready to shield break, except this time make sure to use the anarchy strategy. If you're wondering what that is, it's fairly straightforward. When they break the shield, make sure somebody still has witch's blessing and shoots an anarchy onto the boss. This will make it so the pulsing grenade acts as it is attached to the boss still, so somebody without the blessing can punch him right when the shield comes up, and you can constantly save that blessing and break as many times as you need. Now for this, my team, just to make it safer but not exactly safe, we put the wells up high and we used grenade launchers from up top. We made sure to tell everybody not to strafe, and this is actually where those leviathan mods will come into play. If you can stack tractor cannon with empowered punch and emperor's blaze, you will be doing a big, big service to your damage. Trust me, you're gonna want this stuff. Now that the deception is dead, it is on to Galron. And just to make Galron as easy as possible, we made sure to do the one phase strategy. Now, of course, that means that grenade launchers are still prevalent here, so I'd recommend clearing out as many ads as possible, as well 
as staying up high, making sure to avoid where crystals could spawn. So if you get an idea of where crystals spawn from your other raid, they can sometimes spawn on the boxes that are around the room. Make sure you're away from any potential spawn points as a crystal spawn will instantly kill you and your run. As far as ogres go, make sure you're out of the way if you do have the blessing, and if you don't have the blessing, make sure you're healed up before attacking them. We've had a couple of times where people have died due to ogres just overpowering them. As far as the deception goes, when you're breaking the shield on it, I would always recommend getting a healing nade thrown on you before you go in for the punch. Also, be careful not to run straight into the deception to go for the punch, as when the boss swings at you and you are running full speed into it, it can sometimes cause some kind of physics where you will instantly get destroyed into a wall. So I'd recommend healing nade and standing as still as possible, waiting for him to come to you, and then meleeing. After all three deceptions are down and it is on to the damage phase, make sure to get your empowered punch striking hand whatever you have and make sure that your buffs are swapped accordingly you don't want witch's curse here throw a nade on the ground to make sure the thrall are out of your way and then instantly start melting the boss if you guys are curious as to which loadouts you want for this encounter i would highly recommend watching my swarm of the raven video as that'll kind of show you how fast you can do it but here is the tldr swarm of the raven with spike nades is very important here mountaintop is great here Tractor Cannon is necessary for the Swarm of the Raven to do better, and anything as your secondary works just fine. Clear hands and then start melting the boss, applying as many buffs as possible. That is the TLDR on that. Now good luck, and I believe you can get it done very very easily. I think this is the easiest out of all the three flawless triumphs that we have. Currently I do have a Petra's Run guide out if you are curious and want to know how to get a Petra's Run done. I'm also in the process of getting a like a diamond guide. We've been kind of messing around with it for the past couple months, but it's not quite ready yet. And if you guys did enjoy this video, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. I am streaming on Twitch. I do a lot of Sherpas. I do a lot of guides. I do a lot of just fun challenges. We'll be having a guide on a two man Crown of Sorrows challenge shortly. So be tuned for that. Anyway, guys, have a great rest of your day and peace.